Good morning, all shepherds. I am very clearly neither Pastor Craig nor Pastor Wendy. Yeah? Yeah. I am Pastor Rebecca Great, and I have two different calls for what God is calling me to do in the world. The first is I am the media ambassador and storyteller for the Southern Ohio Synod. And if you know anything about the church, you know we love very long, fancy titles to say simple things. So me being the media ambassador and storyteller means I do communications for the Southern Ohio Synod. So if you are connected to us on social media or you maybe receive our weekly emails, those are 99.9% my fault. (laughs) So thank you. If you are connected, if you're not connected, I can tell you how to do that after the service. The other call I have is I am the mission developer for Momentus, which is a brand new mission start happening very, very near to where we are physically seated here in Lewis Center. You are going to hear all about this during the sermon. You will also hear the gospel, but you will also hear all about Momentus. And it is good to be with you all this morning. I... Before the early service, took a look at the very back of the bulletin that many of you all should have picked up this morning. If you didn't, this is your friendly reminder to sneak out during the prelude to get it, so you have it. Um, But on the back is full of announcements of different ways that you can be connected to what is happening in and through All Shepherds Lutheran Church. The one announcement that Pastor Wendy wanted to make sure that I made this morning concerns everyone who is very concerned about what to do with your eclipse glasses. (laughs) Did you hear we had a solar eclipse last Monday? (laughs) So this is also only for those who have eclipse glasses that actually work and not the fraudulent eclipse glasses. That's a whole thing if you haven't heard of that. But there is a box out in the gathering area or the narthex or the area just on the other side of the glass walls of the sanctuary, whatever we call that space. Immediately as you enter the building, it was on your right. As you leave the sanctuary, it's all the way on the left. And there's a box that says, eclipse glasses here. So put your eclipse glasses there if you brought them with you. I also believe today is the last day to bring them to all shepherds. So my friends who have gathered for worship at 9.30, during the 11.11 service, if you have eclipse glasses at home, you are to safely drive to and from home, and you can bring them and put them in the box that says, what? Eclipse glasses here. If not, I know that there are other opportunities and other organizations that are collecting them to send to other places in the world that will experience a solar eclipse later this year and in future years. So those are all the announcements I have. So I invite you to prepare your hearts for worship as we listen to our prelude.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you. Through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. crucified and resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, 
for the well-being of the church of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and if there are children who would like to go with Miss Becky to Children's Church, she is already waiting for you in the back that you can follow her and head to Children's Church. The first reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Before I read the script, before I read the passage, I want to put this reading in context. Peter, through the name of Jesus, has healed a lame beggar sitting outside the temple and is addressing the people who witnessed that act. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though our, by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked him to have a murderer given to you. You killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know. 
and the faith that is through Je- faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has ever seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Now, I want you to take a really literal, deep breath in, as deep as your lungs will let you go. And I want you to hold it until you count to five, and then slowly let it out. And now I want you to do it again. And as you're breathing, I want you to hear these words. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. And I want you to do it one more time as you listen to these words. Peace be with you. And now you can return to breathing normally. Okay. Now, There is a curious thing about this particular phrase, peace be with you, in our gospel reading this morning. And it requires us to know the teensiest, littlest amount about how ancient Greek is constructed. So everybody who just picked up your coffee, great job. Take another drink of coffee or caffeine because you need to understand a little bit about how ancient Greek functions to understand why there is something really cool about this phrase in our gospel reading. Now, in English, we have a general order to how we construct our sentences. A noun, verbs, a noun into a noun. A child places a ball in a box, okay? Ancient Greek does not always have a set order or structure to how words get written down on a page. Places child in a box a ball would be a valid way of saying the exact same thing as we would understand a child places a ball in a box. Now, because in ancient Greek language, they did not have this set structure, they relied on this whole big system that I'm not going to teach you, but they relied on this whole big system of endings that would change for their nouns and their verbs and their participles and their pronouns and all of these things. So you could know by the ending, 98% of the time, but you would know by the ending what this word was was functioning as. So based off of how the word ended, you would know if it was the subject of the sentence or the direct object of the sentence or the indirect object of the sentence. And this is when you take another sip of caffeine and maybe a deep breath to know that that is as far as the grammar lesson is going. 
So in this gospel reading, Jesus shows up to the disciples and says, Irene humim, which means peace be with you. Now that last word, that humim, is the indirect object, and you know it because of the ending and blah, 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 right, fine. It indicates that it's the disciples who are the ones receiving the peace. This jumped out to me because peace be with you is not the only way that can be translated. It can absolutely be translated that way. Clearly, we all heard it or read it in the gospel reading this morning. I'm not saying the Bible is wrong. That is not the tweet, my friends, right? I'm just saying that there's another couple of layers to how it could be translated. But when it is translated as peace be with you, it like reminds me that peace is with us, like with us, just as God came to dwell with us as this little itty bitty baby who is the savior of the world, who is God present with us as Emmanuel. But it can also equally validly be translated as peace for you or peace be space for you. Not peace before you, but peace be for you. Which then reminds me of that passage from Romans that says, if God is for us, then who is against us? And that goes on to later saying, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's just another layer. But it could also be translated as peace be in you which reminded me of how the Spirit is breathed into the disciples in various different post-resurrection stories in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. The Spirit dwells in them. The same Spirit that dwells in each of us because of the gift and promise that is present through baptism that unites us to God and to one another forever. It is through that gift that we are forever claimed and called to be children of God. Huh? Great job picking the song for today, music director, right? We are forever claimed to be children of God with the very spirit of God dwelling in us us. This, all of these layers, is key to the inspiration behind why the writer of 1 John and 2 John and 3 John, did you know that there was more than one letter, right? Okay, so it's key to why this author wrote down these three very short letters kind of tucked in near the end of what we call the New Testament. It was incredibly important that those who would be receiving those letters to read or to hear them, to know and understand how deep God's love is for each of us as individuals and for us as part of creation. It was important for them to know that the story of God dwelling among us as Jesus who healed and then taught and then suffered and then died and then rose again was true. And if that incredible story is true, then this good news that we are loved and we are children of God forever must be true too. Now, a little over a year ago, I began a new call to serve as a mission developer for Momentus, which is the newest synod-authorized worshiping community within the Southern Ohio Synod. Remember how I said the church likes to make up big, fancy, long titles? 
for very simple things like I'm the media ambassador and storyteller, I'm the communications person. Momentus is a synod authorized worshiping community. It's a mission start. And if you don't know what that means, it means starting church from scratch. Okay. Now we fall under this denomination wide umbrella with all of the other mission developments, all of the other new starts. But we have no plans of ever buying land or building a building. Does your brain hurt yet? Okay. That makes us different than like 99.8% of the other mission developments and new starts across the ELCA. We have an intentional focus on digital ministry, which might sound very scary. It means we're on social media and we have a podcast. Those words might be less scary. The podcast focuses on God's moment to us for that week. So if you're able to visualize words kind of in your brain that you can kind of see them actually spelled out, if you can picture the words moment, and then two, and then us, all as three separate words, and then someone comes along and smushes them together, you get the word momentous. Now, in addition to all of this digital stuff, the social media stuff, the podcast things, we also have in-person kind of pop-up events, um, the next of which is next Sunday morning at Java Central in Uptown Westerville at 10 a.m. for Brood Theology. Now, my hunch is that most of you all will be otherwise engaged next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. As you should be. But my other hunch is you probably know someone in your life who is really questioning things and might not be ready to walk through any door to any church building yet. And if you talk to them this week, you can let them know, like, hey, you should go to Java Central at 10 o'clock because they're just going to talk about stuff. Because there's no topic or agenda. Like, we find out what the topic and agenda is after we're done. Because people just show up, and we ask questions, and we kind of see what a faithful response to those questions might be. It is a wild time. Sometimes we last 40 minutes. Sometimes it's two and a half hours. It depends on how long the conversation is going. Now, all of the in-person kinds of things are happening in and around Genoa Township. Have you heard of this neighboring township just that way? Just what direction is that? East? I grew up in West Virginia. We don't do cardinal directions. <laughs> like... East is that way, I think? Yeah, so it's that way. So they're happening in and around Genoa Township because that has been the fastest growing township in the entire state of Ohio for several years. Do any of you all live or drive through Genoa Township to see all of the subdivisions going in? And trust me, I know there is good news and there is bad news about that. Like, I, I know. But also in that township, there is not a mainline Protestant voice to be found. And as a pastor within the ELCA, I think we have a very particular good take on God's grace and God's love. So Momentus is showing up to make sure that that is proclaimed for our friends who may not be ready to walk through the doors of a church building. And for those who have walked through doors of church buildings, but maybe heard awful, hateful, no good, very bad things about them or about people they love. But maybe they are sensing the spirits nudging, try this, try again. Now we are hoping that these points of connection help people grow in their faith. That's the scary agenda, right? We just hope that people grow in their faith and their relationship with God. And that probably, in a few years that we grow to be kind of a small group kind of ministry or a house church kind of ministry. Because why? Because we're not buying land or building a building. 
please, right? My hunch is when that day happens, that there will be members of Momentus that say, hey, pastor, we would really like our own building to go to. And that's when I get to say, great, God's doing something with this conversation, right? Why were we called into existence for those who struggled to walk through church doors? So why would we build a church with doors that might keep the people that we were called to be with out? So when they come to me and say, pastor, we want to be a part of a choir, great. I will remind, ask them to remind me what part of the Metro Columbus sprawl they live in. And if they say Lewis Center, I happen to know a congregation, you all may have heard of them, that has a building with lots and lots of ministries that are covering the entire backside of a bulletin, and that's not even all of them. But I can say, hey, friend, you want to go to a brick-and-mortar church that is doing the things you are craving to grow in your faith that way. I'm going to say, great, go check out All Shepherds in Lewis Center. They're doing the thing. That may take some time to get there. But by doing that, we're then strengthening the local congregations. Did you know that there's like a million and a half ELCA churches within Columbus? Again, I grew up in West Virginia. There are not many of us, right? So if someone lives in Upper Arlington, we have ELCA congregations in Upper Arlington that I can help them get connected to. If they live in Worthington, same thing. If they live in Linden, same thing. If they live in Westerville, same thing. If they live in Delaware, same thing, right? We can help them get connected to congregations that are already there and are already doing ministry. We don't have to necessarily build one more building. And then Momentus helps strengthen our congregations. Now, we launched officially on Easter Sunday, 2023, and at this point, the online community is over 600 people. Yes, 600, over. We have also had the podcast downloaded just over 3,500 times the last I checked it this morning. And we have partnered with about 20 congregations across the Southern Ohio Synod, all the way from one of our easternmost congregations all the way to one of our westernmost congregations, like just across the Synod, um, for various levels of financial support. Some of you, I think I've heard this to be true, some of you were present when All Shepherds was at its very first beginning days, and we know that you can't start church from scratch with zero dollars. Well, you can, because God can, all things are possible through God. I can quote Philippians too. But it's really hard, right? So we've partnered with many congregations across our synod. Um, and I hope that this is not news to you, all shepherds, but did you know that your last fiscal year ended with a surplus? One head nod, two head nods. Three head nods. So I'm going to say it again, and there should be more head nods. Did you know that your last fiscal year ended with a surplus, All Shepherds Lutheran Church? I got words that time. It's amazing. So with that surplus, I don't know where all of it went, but I do know that a portion of it was tithed to Momentus to help pay it forward from one mission start, now congregation, to another mission start. So I'm here also to say thank you for sharing out of your abundance and your generosity. That donation, that tithe, has already been put to use. It provided communion elements for our very first Easter sunrise service. We had a sunrise service at Kingwood Memorial Gardens, which is a cemetery just down 23. Um, so we've had communion at that service, which is really exciting. And it's already helped with purchasing supplies that will be used and distributed at the 2024 ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans. I saw a big colored in fleur de lis out there in the gathering space. So I think you all have heard that there's a youth gathering coming this year. So there will be things for Momentus that will be handed out there thanks to your all's generosity and sharing. In your bulletin, on that back page of announcements that I have alluded to multiple times because you should read your bulletin announcements, <laughs> right? 
there is a link to our actual website where you can type that into your web browser and you can learn more about what Momentus is up to, especially the things that we have planned for our in-person gatherings over this coming summer. Um, next month we'll have our fall planned, but we gotta get to summer first. So there's lots of things happening. You all are welcome to attend any or all of those, and I would love it if you would spread the word about those things. One of them is a hike uh, at Shale Hollow Park, which is like your neighbor. So I would love for you all to join us for any and all of those. But the big thing is thank you all for sharing your generosity with Momentus. Because this is what ministry together is about. It is about getting the news out about our God who continues to love us and shows up in our lives, proclaiming peace with and for and in us, no matter what is happening in our lives or in our communities or in our world. We know that God's love triumphs over all things. That is the good news that we are called to proclaim through our words or through our actions or the things that we write down in that insert in your bulletin. I'm going to talk about the bulletin, right? That insert in your bulletin that you can write it down as a letter or you could keep it or you could put it in this blue mailbox, right? So right now I want you to take a really big deep breath in, hold it till you count to five, and slowly release that breath as you hear these words. Peace be with you. Now I want you to do it one more time. Peace be for you. Do it one more time. Peace be in you. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our hymn as we gather at your table.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus has risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all of its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice bring peace to all nations, and focus on the care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayers. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are, who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines, and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayers. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died as we remember and share their love and comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayers. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for our time of offering, and I invite Pastor Bengson or Glenn to come forward because you have several announcements about some exciting things happening this year. Christ is risen. Christ risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. I'll just stay right here. Um, several Sundays ago during uh, the Lenten season, we heard the lesson of Jesus at uh, a dinner party in which a woman came and poured oil over his feet, very expensive stuff. And uh, Judas, who was always very uh, cheap about these things, said, well, that oil could be sold and the money given to the poor. And Jesus responded, the poor you will always have with you. And if you want to, you can do good to them. If you want to, you can do good to them. Well, this year is the uh, 50th anniversary of the ELCA hunger appeal. And you've got a, a brochure in your bulletin this morning that publicizes that fact, gives you a lot of information about it. I uh, recommend that you take a look at it and, and uh, find out more as the, uh, as the brochure helps us do that. Uh, during the Easter season, we celebrate new life, celebrate the new life of Christ, the new life of Christ with us, for us, in us. And uh, that's part of what the Hunger Appeal is about, is to help other people experience that new life in Christ, 
that God intends for them, a new life beyond the hunger, the poverty, uh, the lack of resources, housing, and so forth that some people experience on a very daily basis. Um, so we uh, gather on a Sunday morning to share in our praise of God, to hear God's word that uh, impels us out into the world, you know, go, love, serve, and so forth, uh, as we say after each service. We have a long list of outreach projects, some of which are on our bulletin this morning, others that we're uh, aware of that we do month by month, sometimes even weekly. Like the hunger appeal, there's always, or usually at least, there's always an envelope like this and some of the little pew racks around in the sanctuary. Uh, if you can't find one of these there, you can usually find one out on the table right outside the doors here. I suggest you think of it as a kind of love letter that you might uh, not put in this mailbox, but put in the offering plate and uh, it and the offerings that you, you give through that will go to really help people experience the new life in Christ, experience the peace of Christ that Jesus intends for them. So we have a continuing opportunity to do this, to witness. We are blessed to be able each Sunday to come to the table of the Lord and to feast upon the Lord's grace and goodness for us. The hunger appeal is an opportunity for us to extend that table into the world to those who may need that uh, new life and that peace in their own lives. So uh, thanks for uh, your attention to that. And uh, I want to just append to this the awesome group, you know, that, that group of uh, miscreants that usually meet back in one of the rooms, the uh, larger Sunday school room, will meet in room 19 today because there's the family Sunday school that will take place in the larger, in the larger room. So, thank you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Friends, I want to say thank you one more time. On behalf of Momentus for how this congregation shares generously your time, your talents, and your treasures. And also want to thank you on behalf of the Southern Ohio Synod for the same thing, because that money that you share with the Synod also goes on to help ensure that things like the ELCA World Hunger Appeal are funded and our siblings across the world have full bellies. But today we gather, and I invite you to stand as we get ready to celebrate the greatest gift that is offered to each and every single one of us through this meal that is called Holy Communion, and that is the bread and the wine, Christ himself. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, 
and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Those of you who are joining us from home, you are invited to gather your communion elements. And remember that this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. I invite our communion assistants to come forward.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. At all shepherds, we are all shepherds. Together we go love, encourage, nurture, serve all people in Christ's name. Thanks be to God.